Let him approach. like a tangled chain. Nothing impaired, but all disordered. <laughs> Who's next? Gentles, perchance you wonder at the show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady Thisbe is certain. <laughs> In the same interlude, it doth befall that I won snout by name, presents a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and such a wall as I would have you think have in it a crannied hole or chink through which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did whisper often, very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, this stone doth show that I am the same wall, the truth is so. And this cranny is right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? <laughs> uh, the partition I ever heard discourse, my lord. <coughs> Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence. <laughs> oh, grim looked knight. Oh, knight with hue so black. Oh, knight which ever art when day is not. Oh, knight. O oh, night, alack, alack, alack. <laughs> I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, O oh wall, O oh sweet and lovely wall, which standest between her father's ground and mine, thou wall, O oh wall, O oh sweet and lovely wall, <laughs> show me thy chink to blink through with mine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. Show shield thee well for this. But what see I? No Thisbe do I see. Oh, wicked wall, for whom I see no bliss. Curse me thy stones, for thus to see me. The wall methinks being sensible should curse again. <laughs> no, sir, to speak truth he should not. <clears throat> Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. <laughs> oh, Walt, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting ah. thy fair pyramus and me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones, thy stones with lime and hair knit up in thee. I see a voice. <laughs> I will now to the chink. To see and I can hear my Thisbe's face. <laughs> Thisbe! My love! Thou art my love, I think. Think what thou wilt. I am thy lover's grace. 
Kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. <laughs> I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. <laughs> Wilt thou at Minnie's tomb meet me straightway? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. <laughs> Thus have I wall my heart discharged so, and being done, thus wall away. <laughs> this is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. The best in this kind are but shadows, and the worst you know worse. If imagination amends them. It must be your imagination then, and not theirs. <laughs> if we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. <laughs> Here comes two beasts in, a man and a lion. <laughs> you ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here when lion rough in wildest rage doth roar. <laughs> <laughs> then know that I, as snow the cook, am a lion fell, nor else no lions dare. <laughs> Very gentle beast, and of a good conscience. The best that a beast e'er I saw, my lord. <coughs> this lion is a very fox for his valor. <laughs> True, and a goose for his discretion. His valor cannot carry his discretion, for you see, the fox carries the goose. Ah, but his discretion, I am sure, cannot carry his valor, for the goose carries not the fox. It is well. Leave it to his discretion, and let us listen to the moon. This lantern doth the horned moon present. <laughs> he is no crescent, and his horns are invisible within the circumference. <laughs> this lantern doth the horned moon present. Myself the man in the moon doth seem to be. This, this is the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lantern. How else is the man in the moon? How is he to get to the candle, for you see, it is already in snuff. I am aweary of this moon. <laughs> would he would change. <laughs> we could tell by his small light of discretion that he is in the way. But in courtesy and all discretion, we must stay the time. Proceed, moon. All that I must say is, this lantern is the moon. <laughs> Here comes this beast. <laughs> I hear his old ninny's tomb. Where is my love? Roar! <laughs> well roared, lion. Well run, Thisbe. Well shown, moon. <laughs> Truly the moon shines with a good grace. <laughs> well moused, lion. And then came Pyramus. I thank thee, sweet moon, for thy sunny beams. <laughs> I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright, for by thy gracious, golden, glittering gleams, I trust to take all the truest fizz sight. But stay, O oh spite, what mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here? Eyes, do you see? How can it be? Oh, dainty duck, oh dear! <laughs> Thy shawl good, what stained with? Blood! <laughs> dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. Beshrew my heart, but I pity the man. <laughs> Out sword! <laughs> and wound the pap of Pyramus, by that left pap in which the heart doth hop. Thus! <laughs> I die. <laughs> die, die, die. Now I am dead. Now I am fled. My soul is in the sky. Sun, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Oh. <laughs> now I die. Die, die, die. Die. <laughs> no die but an ace for him, for he is but one, less than an ace man, for he is nothing. <laughs> With the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover, and yet prove an ass. <laughs> How chance moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes to find her lover. <laughs> she will find him by starlight. Here she comes, and her passion ends the play. He <laughs> thinks she should not use a long one for such a pyramus. I hope she will be brief. <laughs> a sleep.
sleep? My love? What dead, my dove? O oh, pureness, arise! Speak, speak, quite dumb. Dead, dead, a tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. These lily lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks are gone, are gone. His eyes were green as leeks, tongue not a word. Come, trusty sword, come play my breast and brew. <laughs> 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 no, I assure you, sir, the wall that parted their fathers is down. Will it <laughs> please you to hear our epilogue, or to see a bird? No, no epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse. Never excuse. <laughs> for when the players were all dead, there need none to be blamed. Mary, if he that had ridden and played pyramids and hanged himself in Bisbee's garter, it would have been a fine tragedy. <laughs> so it is truly, very notably discharged. I hate you! You don't care to appreciate art, okay? Whatever, art, whatever! The iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve. 